What's up guys? Welcome to my i7-4790K CPU deleting tutorial and uh, there's not much else to say. We're going to be taking the lid off a CPU, going to be putting a new uh, TIM, a thermal interface material between the CPU die and the heat spreader and hopefully we're going to get much better temperatures from that and without further ado, here we go. Before we begin, here's a list of items that you're going to need. Isopropyl alcohol to clean off excess thermal compound. A mini vise, of which I will put a link in the description below for the vise that I use for this. Uh, you're going to need a kitchen roll or microfiber cloth uh, to actually do the cleaning. Of course, you're going to need a liquid metal. In this case, we're going to be using Thermal Grizzly's Conductor Knot. Uh, you're going to need thermal compound as well after that. And of course, you're going to need an Intel CPU to deal it. Step 1. Remove the CPU from the socket. Step 2. Clean off excess thermal paste with your isopropyl alcohol. Step 3. Now what you want to do is that you want to take the vise and you want to line up the PCB, the edge of the PCB on one side of the vise and after that, you're going to line up the heat spreader, not the other edge of the PCB, the heat spreader on the other side of the vise. Okay? On the moving arm of the vise. So once you get it seated properly, what you need to do is you need to slowly start turning. And you just keep on turning. It's going to feel very difficult at first, but you just need to feel give just a little bit. And then you move on to the next side. Okay? So you do this for all four sides of the IHS and eventually after a little bit of giving and going, giving and going, again remember not to apply too much pressure, you will eventually be able to get the heat spreader off of the CPU die. Just like that. Step 4. Now once we've got the heat spreader off, just use the isopropyl alcohol to get rid of the thermal paste on the inside of the CPU die. It's going to be flaky, it's going to be in terrible condition, so just wipe it off, don't worry about it. Uh, you know, uh, just take extra care to not rip off the capacitors on the side. And uh, while you're at it, uh, make sure that you uh, don't clean off the thermal paste on the inside of the heat spreader yet. Why? You'll find out later, uh, but yes. Uh, there it is. Your CPU is now breathing fresh air, nice and clean, out in the open. And uh, yeah, on to the next step. Step 5. Use your fingernails to get rid of the rubber sealant uh, that you will find, the silicone sealant that you will find uh, around the CPU die. Okay, you can use anything else like maybe a pen knife, uh, you know, or a cutting knife if you feel adventurous. But I didn't dare to do so because I was uh, scared that I was going to scratch the PCB. So I just stuck to my fingernails. Of course, you can still use isopropyl alcohol to get rid of uh, any excess thermal paste that you might find and to also actually help clean off the rubber sealant. And you want it as flat as possible. Step 6. Squeaky bum time. So this is when we actually apply the conductor knot onto the CPU die. Now you need to use the micro applicator that comes together with the Thermal Grizzly conductor knot uh, paste. So you just need a tiny little bead, not much, that's all. That's all you need, just a tiny little bead. And then you can use the included uh, tightly wound cotton swabs, which are not like any other cotton swabs that you will find uh, you know, in drugstores or in pharmacies. And you just need to take care. Now I'm going to slow it down a little bit the video here so that you can see how evenly spread you must spread out the liquid metal. Okay, it's got to cover the entire CPU die. It's got to be as even as possible uh, or else you're going to get some really bad hot spots. And you've got to be really, really slow and deliberate. And yeah, that's that. Step 7. Now, remember earlier when I said to not get rid of the thermal compound on the inside of the heat spreader? Well, you're going to want to do it right now, but only after you've figured out where exactly you need to put the second layer of conductor knot. 
right? Once you have sort of memorized where you need to do it, you can just quickly scrape it off with isopropyl alcohol. This is also a great time to get rid of all of the excess double paste that will be stuck to the sides and also to get rid of as much rubber slash silicone adhesive uh, that you will find on the inside of the heat spreader. Okay, so of course whatever is left you can use as marking guides to figure out where you need to put your next layer of conductor out. Step 8. Now you have to line up uh, the heat spreader and the die as best as you can and try and figure out just how much conductor knot you need to put and where you need to put it. Okay, so watch your gaps, uh, use measuring tape if you have to, uh, and then just go ahead and sweep away. You don't really need to put an extra layer or another bead of the conductor knot. You can if you want to, but just a tiny, tiny bead. You can just use the excess that you have uh, from your cotton swab from earlier. Uh, that you use to apply it in the first place and then just roughly draw the shape of the PCB and you're good to go or should I say the CPU die, not the PCB don't paint the whole C PCB Step 9 Okay, so here it is the final assembly well, second last step actually for the assembly you just need to put the heat spreader back on top of the CPU die and don't forget to line up the two dots uh, for the upper notches uh, for the CPU correctly and then just gently let it down so that it lands square. You can always adjust it. Uh, try not to adjust it too much. You don't want that uh, conductor knot running around on the inside. There you go. Your CPU has been reassembled. Step 10. When you put your CPU back into the socket, remember that there's no adhesive holding it together. So uh, be very careful when you put it back in. There will be some adhesion between the, the conductor knot on the CPU die and the inside of the heat spreader. But that's not a permanent solution. So you can just leave it floating like this when you put it in. And of course, uh, put in your thermal paste. Uh, make sure you, when you screw in uh, your cooler, to do it in an X configuration. Um, rather than doing both sides at once and there you go that's it congratulations uh, you've done it and all you have to do now is to just boot it up and see if it works